Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Mia and today we're chatting about how to use the principles of feng shui to declutter your home. If this is your first time landing on this channel, then welcome. I've been helping people to create holistic clutter-free spaces for many years now, and a good portion of my content revolves around the psychology of our environments. You can see my whole psychology of our spaces playlist right here. But something that fascinates me almost as much as psychology is cultural environmental practices. And I especially like seeing the points where culture and symbolism intersects with science and psychology regarding our environments. So. While I'm certainly no feng shui expert and I'm not going to discuss any design principles in this video, I think that there's a lot to gain from learning to tap into your space's energy and learning to lean into your intuition. I've said many times before that your environment directly impacts your energy. Feng shui is just one example of a symbolic framework representing that. Feng Shui is a Chinese practice that focuses on how your living spaces affect your energy and your life, where everything that you place in a room has a specific energy and its placement in your home can work for or against you. Now the term Feng Shui translates to wind and water, two natural elements that in Chinese culture symbolize the flow of energy or qi as they call it throughout the environment. So Feng Shui is really all about symbolism. The goal is just to align your surroundings with the natural world, to attract positive energy and just enhance different areas of your life, like health, wellness, and relationships. In feng shui, clutter represents stagnant energy that can hinder the flow of the positive energy, or the qi, throughout your home. And this stagnation can lead to feeling stuck, overwhelmed, and stressed. Clearing the clutter allows the qi to move freely, promoting a sense of calm and balance. Now, before we dive into the actual decluttering steps, there are some preliminary housework, if you will, that needs to take place before we start diving into decluttering. And the first is to make sure that we're starting with a clear intent. Feng Shui is all about purposeful design. It's about intentionally directing positive energy, that qi, throughout our environment. So while we're not diving into design and the use of a Bagua map, this clear intent and intentional energy direction is still an inherent aspect of feng shui practice. Julie Ku had a really good series on this and I'll be sure to link to it in the description. And she explains that qi must always have a space to slow down, meander, orbit, and accumulate. I like the description of that. Auspicious energy, which is lucky energy in feng shui, moves through your home and meanders around the space. Whereas inauspicious energy or bad chi, bad luck vibes, move fast and in a straight line. So good energy allows for space within a space where the furniture itself has space around it. The decor isn't crammed together, each piece has some space around it. So there's space for this chi or this good energy to kind of spin around and orbit and dance and play around the room. That's what we're looking for. So setting clear intentions and maintaining clarity in your living space is gonna to help to direct and enhance the intentional flow of this positive energy. The second bit of housekeeping is to literally do some housekeeping. Clean each room of your house thoroughly. One part of decluttering with feng shui that people often ignore is the importance of cleanliness. A mess is also considered clutter in feng shui. Stains on your furniture, dirty handprints from kids on the wall, dust accumulating on top of bookshelves. It all needs to be cleaned up before you even start the practice of creating a feng shui space. You can't correctly implement feng shui in a dirty space. And a third preliminary step is to just create functional storage solutions. You wanna make sure that you have a place to put things and that each item has an address. Even if the things aren't currently in that address or in that home, we wanna make sure that the things will have a designated home once you finished. So now that we've got that taken care of, we're ready to go through and remove clutter utilizing the principles of feng shui in each room. We're gonna focus on the most important rooms of your house according to feng shui. Number one, clear the entrance. The entrance is the mouth of qi. This is where energy enters your home. Your home's front door is known as the qi of your home and you want that to set the tone for the rest of your home. So we wanna keep this area clear of things like piles of shoes, dumped coats, and any other items that can block that flow of energy. 
but creating a positive entrance doesn't just apply to your front door or your entryway, it also applies to any other entry areas like your porch, your mudroom, anything that is accessed right there before you get into the main areas of the home. So here's some steps you can take to declutter the entry according to feng shui. You can remove anything that you don't need on the porch itself or within the view of the external entryway. So think things like old potted plants that you haven't been taken care of or a messy trash bin that's off to the side of the house but that's visible from the front door. Also doorway clutter at the entry like dump shoes or catch all dishes where you throw your keys, change, receipts, everything else as you walk in or dumped off coats like we mentioned earlier. You also wanna have a place for easily cluttered items like mail, keys, and purses. And then you can take it a step further if you want by using the principles of feng shui when choosing what to leave in your entrance, what not to declutter, to make your front entryway more of a statement. You might consider things like adding plants or a water feature to attract more positive energy and just keeping it clean, well-lit, and inviting. Number two is to declutter your kitchen. The kitchen is the gathering place in your home. It represents nourishment, prosperity, and family harmony. You cook and serve meals, you entertain friends and family, and you might even help your kids with their homework there at the table. So feng shui views your kitchen as the primary health resource, especially for liver health, interestingly. So it's important to keep this area clean to maintain vitality and unobstructed to maintain that harmonious energy. You might even consider keeping fresh fruits, vegetables, or herbs visible to symbolize health and abundance, like a fresh bowl of fruit on the counter can attract positive energy and feng shui. Some specific ways to declutter your kitchen with feng shui in mind are by removing everything from the refrigerator, tossing expired items, cleaning the drawers, wiping down the shelves, and really organizing each shelf and indoor bin by category so that things are easier to find and also so that that chi, that space, can flow freely around the different categories. Also, keep the stove well cleaned and unobstructed. Don't store pans or appliances on it that would prevent you from being able to use all of the burners. In feng shui, Way, the stove represents wealth and abundance and how you treat this space can influence your financial prosperity and the more stove burners you have the better because the stove burners represent wealth and resources and using all of the burners equally represents a balanced energy flow removing harsh chemicals and poisons from the kitchen can help to maintain health and vitality so consider decluttering any chemicals or cleaners that you're not even using and the ones that you are using be sure that they're safely stored away and not being kept on the counters or in any of the cooking or food spaces and then clean out all of the drawers and appliances in the kitchen removing anything that is broken or that you don't use and try to leave space around each zone or category and each major appliance so like around your blender and around your toaster you don't want to have all of these appliances crammed together try to leave a little bit of space for that chi to be able to flow freely and finally remember that dust or grease is also considered a type of clutter in feng shui so scrub the walls light fixtures and any surfaces with grease and dust where they build up over time. And number three, the bedroom. In feng shui, the bedroom is actually considered the most important room of the house and a cornerstone of the home. Our bedroom is a place of peace, rejuvenation, and safety. You want to remove anything here that doesn't create a soothing environment where you can rest after a long day. Just a note, I always say that the bedroom is the most important room of the house, and in fact, you can see more about why I say this in this video right here. When it comes to feng shui in your bedroom, less is more. Feng Shui expert Angie Cho says, besides a comfortable bed with feel-good linens, a solid headboard, and a grounding rug, eliminate whatever else you can. That means no clutter, no electronics, and no wayward socks that didn't make it into your hamper. That kind of sums it up in a nutshell, but some specific ways to declutter your room according to Feng Shui would be to remove anything that obstructs the flow and doesn't facilitate relaxation. So think exercise equipment, televisions, anything work-related, obviously I don't live by this rule, but I can understand the value in one space, one purpose, which is something that James Clear talks about in the book Atomic Habits. Having one space dedicated to one purpose helps you to be more productive and to build better habits. You also want to declutter under the bed. Storing items under the bed can block the flow of chi or energy and disrupt your sleep. But if you have to use the space for storage and you're trying to maintain the chi of your space, try to limit it to soft sleep-related items like extra bedding. Avoid storing items that are related to work or negative emotions like old love letters and things that represent movement or restlessness like shoes or luggage. 
And it's a big deal in feng shui to not have furniture looming over you as far as the level of the bed. Like desks or tables, they shouldn't be higher up than the bed to where they can loom over you. These can give off constrictive energy and lack of safety while sleeping, and they may just block the flow of energy in the room according to feng shui. Declutter electronics from the room as much as possible, except for the necessities that you need in that room. Here's a difficult one. Books contain active and intellectual energy stimulating the mind and are recommended to be decluttered to other areas of the house or donated, including the bookshelf if you're actively storing those in your room. And remove clutter from closets. The goal here is for closets and drawers to be well organized and not overfilled or crammed because remember, Cluttered storage spaces can lead to that stagnant energy and affect your overall well-being. So regularly going through things like your clothes and your belongings, donating or discarding items that you no longer use or need, and using effective organizers and dividers just to keep everything in its place with, again, that space able to move around it makes it easy to overall maintain a high chi feng shui room. Now, as with any practice, you take what you need and you leave the rest. You take what's going to be beneficial or helpful or maybe a different way to reframe how you look at your current spaces and your belongings, and you leave the things that you don't feel like would work for you and your space. But the purpose of feng shui in general is to improve physical and emotional well-being. You want your energy levels to spike when you're at home and clutter drains that energy. So for many people, feng shui is a guide for how they can reduce negative energy in every room and bring more vibrancy and positivity to their life and space. Hopefully you found this video interesting. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want a checklist version of this video, I've added it to my free resource library, which you can access down in the description or by going to miadanielle.com forward slash freebies. Have a great day. I'll chat with you next week.